Hello. In this and the next few videos, I'd like to give you a few bird's eye view ideas on the row reduced echelon form. I assume that you know Gaussian elimination. I find that students master Gaussian elimination quite easily, and they know how to calculate the row reduced echelon form, but sometimes they're not quite sure what it's for, why it works, and what to do with it once they calculate it. So these are the topics that I would like to discuss in the next few lectures. And we'll start in the middle, or maybe at the end, what to do with it once you've obtained it. And of course, what you do with it is find the null space. And if you're solving a linear system, find the particular solution as well. So I'll just illustrate it with an example. So suppose you've done your work and your row reduced echelon form ended up like this. One, zero, zero, zero. Three, zero, zero, zero. Zero, one, zero, zero. Two, three, zero, zero. Seven, eight, zero, zero. Zero, zero, one, zero. Two, three, zero, zero. Zero, zero, seven, zero. Should we have one more? One, two, three, zero. All right, that's a good point to stop. Okay, this is a matrix in row reduced echelon form. Let's discuss what, what are the hallmarks of the row reduced echelon form. Well, the main, you can call them the main vectors, are these. The main columns are these three. These columns are called the pivot columns, and they're perfect for expressing other vectors as linear combinations. Any other ve vector in the matrix can be expressed in terms of these three. So, a row reduced echelon form consists of pivot columns, in which, in this case, we only have three, and every other column is linearly dependent on the pivot columns that came before it. Every other column, those are called the non-pivot columns, can be expressed as linear combination of the pivot columns before it. So, for example, this one is three times the first. This one is 2 times the first plus 3 times the third. This one is 7 times the first plus 8 times the third. Do you see how easy it is to express all the non-pivot columns in terms of the pivot columns? That's because these columns essentially come from the identity matrix. They're always the first few columns of the identity matrix. That's what makes them so perfect for representing other columns as linear combinations. And of course, it's these linear relationships that are the key to the null space. When you know the linear relationships among the columns, you know the null space. And when you have a matrix in the row reduced echelon form, you know and see the relationship between the among the columns very easily. That's the point of the row reduced echelon form, to expose the linear relationships among the columns in a very obvious and clear way. And I don't think you can argue that in this form, those relationships are completely obvious. And once you see those relationships, it's very easy to turn those relationships into non-trivial linear combinations of columns that result in the zero column, or short for short, that result in the zero. For example, three times the first column minus the second is zero. How would we use this column to make a zero column? Well, of course, we would take twice the first column, 
3 times the third, that would give us this column, and then subtract this column. How would we use this column? 7 times the first, 8 times the third, minus 1 times the fifth. Let's go for the last column. How would you use this column to produce a non-trivial linear combination of columns, linear combination of columns that produces the zero? Well, you would take one of the first column, two of the third, three of the sixth, and minus one of this one. That's because the first three columns combined to give us this column. So then when we subtract this column, we get zero. So the null space is now at our fingertips, thanks to the row reduced echelon form. And of course, it's every non-pivot column that contributes a new dimension to the null space, that contributes to the new element of the null space. Let's see. Every element in the null space will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 tall. So now I'm regretting how wide I made this matrix. So, and there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 dimensions. Of course, I, it would have been more easy, it would have been easier to count the pivot columns and subtract it from 9. So, I now have the challenge of fitting 6 columns in this space. So, here's my null space. It would be any constant A times, well, what I said before. Three of, excuse me, that's correct. Three of the first column and minus one of the second column. So three minus one followed by seven zeros. The next column, the next element in the null space. comes from this non-pivot column, which is twice the first, three times the third, and minus one times the first, excuse me, the fourth. So, twice the first, three times the third, and minus one times the fourth, followed by five zeros. Okay, that's the second element. The third element, seven times the first, eight times the third, and minus one times the fifth, plus C. What I said, seven times the first, eight times the third, minus one times the fifth. Zero, 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 zero. A, B, C, D. The fourth one comes from this one, which of course is twice the first. Well, it's the same as this one, except the minus one will be in the seventh position. So, Two, zero, three, and let me put minus one in the seventh position, followed by two zeros with three zeros in between. A, B, C, D plus E comes from this column, which is simply seven times this column. Six, eight. So there will be minus 1 in the 8th spot, 7 in the 6th spot, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and now comes the final dimension in the null space. And it is one of the first column, two of the third column, three 
of the sixth column and minus one of the last column. So you see how these minus ones appear in the location in a slot that corresponds to the location of the non-pivot columns. And all of the non-zero numbers before it, before the minus one, correspond to the locations of the pivot columns. So let's just finish this up. Is this correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. And now we have the null space. And we obtained it so easily because the matrix had been reduced to the row reduced echelon form, to this perfect form for seeing the relationship among the columns. Now let's assume that all of this is happening in the context of solving a linear system where there was also a right hand side that was brought along for the ride. It was brought along for the ride and will now usually, most books suggest sticking it into the matrix itself. I see the appeal of not having to write too many letters. X, Y, Z, T, U. X, Y, Z, T in this case. Suppose those numbers were, so usually a vertical bar is advocated. And then let's say those numbers were 11, 13, minus 5, and 0. Okay. Not only were we able to determine the null space, but we're now just as easily able to express the right-hand side in terms of the pivot columns. Now, you don't have to go for the pivot columns, but the standard is to do so, and it's easiest to do so, to just take advantage of the pivot columns to express everything that you need to express. So now, we can write out the general solution to the original linear system, x, y, z, t, Oh, excuse me. No, of course, there would be nine letters here. So I frequently made this mistake, and I don't like the fact that I made it now. So it'll be X, Y, Z. I can't use those letters anymore, so we'll start X, Y, Z, O, P, Q, R, S, T. So the general solution to the original problem would be X, Y, Z. O, P, Q, R, S, T. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Correct. Equals. Okay. We have to express the right hand side with respect to these columns. And all we need is the pivot columns. And what we need is 11 of column 1, 13 of column 3 minus pi of column, and minus pi of column 6, which is right here, and all of the others, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This would be a particular solution, plus anything from the null space. And we have the complete general solution to whatever linear system this row reduced echelon form came from. Okay, and once again, the row reduced echelon form was the key to finding both the particular solution, because the right hand side is very easily expressed in terms of the pivot columns, and what we spent most of our time on is the null space is expressed very easily when the matrix is broken up into the pivot columns and the non-pivot columns in this form. And just one final note, if you did all of the work and this ended up being a 10 and not a 0, then you would of course, then of course it becomes abundantly clear that the right hand side cannot be expressed in terms of the pivot columns. In which case there would be no solutions. So the row reduced special and form also tells us in an obvious way when a system has no solutions. So here's why we compute the row reduced special form, and also a little bit of an illustration of what to do once you've obtained the row reduced special form. I believe that sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to see what it is that's to be done with a row reduced special form when the matrix is small and there are very few non-pivot columns. So I think that this example, or I hope 
that this example was helpful in helping you understand the purpose of the row reduced echelon form. Okay, in the next short video, I'll explain why Gauss elimination and reduction of the matrix to the row reduced echelon form actually works.